welcome back guys in this video i'll be showing you how to use intel's xcss frame generation and low latency mode in cyberpunk 2077 running on my windows pc that has a ryzen 5700x 3d processor and an rtx 2070 super gpu with the release of xcss sdk 2.1 xcss frame generation and low latency mode are working on non-intel gpus that support shader model 6.4 or anything newer than this just to be clear Prior to this update, the DP4A model of XCSS Upscaler was already working on non-Intel GPUs. It's just that XCSS Frame Generation and Low Latency Mode were only available on Intel Arc-based GPUs. But now with the latest update of XCSS SDK, these features are also working on non-Intel GPUs. In order to access these XCSS features on non-Intel GPUs, the games already need to support XCSS Frame Generation and Low Latency Mode. All we need to do is manually update the XCSS files to the latest ones. However, this won't work in every game. In Cyberpunk, for some reason, I was not able to get XCSS frame generation working with the in-game DLSS subscaler, but it worked fine with the in-game FSR and XCSS subscalers. So what I'm going to do is use OptiScaler mod. We'll activate it via the in-game XCSS subscaler, then replace XCSS with DLSS subscaler. Basically using OptiScaler DLSS and combining it with in-game XCSS frame generation, even XCSS low latency mode will work fine this way. I'll also compare XCSS frame generation with in-game FSR frame generation and Newcom 9 mod FSR frame generation. I have measured the latency of each of these frame generation techniques using AMD's FLM software. I'm not sure about the accuracy of this software. I will be sharing with you the data. Make of that data what you will. Okay, download XCSS SDK from here, GitHub. I'll give its link in the description. Expand the asset section. Click on the dot zip link here. You can just search for your GPU on TechPowerUp's website. Open its page. Here you can find the information about your GPU shader model. This is for RTX 2070 Super shader model 6.8. This game comes with an older version of DLSS 4 upscaler. I'll manually update it to the latest version that is 310.3.0. This version of DLSS is still not available in NVIDIA app. You can download it from Tech Power of website. Click on download here. Click on any of these servers. Download will start. I'll be using the latest preview 13 nightly build of OptiScaler mod available on GitHub for free. Expand that section. Click on this dot 7 z link here. 0.7.7 preview 13 20250731. Just need to set the render preset to K in order to activate the transformer model of DLSS4. I'll be verifying the upscaler's details using DLSS debug overlay. In order to activate this overlay, I'll be executing the registry code provided by Amos. Just copy these lines. Create a new text file anywhere on your PC. Name it anything you want. I'll just name it as overlay. Change the extension from .txt to .reg. Hit enter. Yes. Select the file. Right click. Open with notepad. Paste the lines here. Click on file. Click on save. Close and run this registry file. This will activate the DLSS debug overlay. In order to disable it, just replace the number 4 here with 0. Click on file, click on save, close and run this registry file. I'll revert the change as I want to enable the DLSS debug overlay. Right click open, click on yes. Ok. Now I'll install OptiScaler mod, open its archive file. Copy these two files, OptiScaler.dll and OptiScaler.ini. Need to paste them in the games install directory. Select the game in your Steam library, right click, manage, click on browse local files, click on bin, click on x64, paste the files here. Change the name of optiscaler.tll file to txgi or winmm.tll. I'll use txgi as the file name. Open optiscaler.ini file, set tx12 upscaler to dlss, set fg type to no fg. Click on file, click on save, close. Now we just need to update the in-game XCSS files. Open XCSS SDK's archive file. Open bin folder. Copy the highlighted files. Lib xcll.tll. This file corresponds to XCSS low latency mode. Lib xcss.tll. This file corresponds to XCSS super resolution scalar. Lib xcss underscore fg corresponds to XCSS frame generation. Lib xcss underscore tx11 corresponds to native xcss subscaler in DirectX 11 mode which is only supported by Intel Arc GPUs. Don't need to copy this file. Open the games install directory. Open bin folder. 
open x64 folder paste everything here replace yeah files have been updated i'll also update the game's dlss upscaler open the upscaler's archive file that you downloaded earlier copy this dll file nvngx underscore dlss yet yeah, this file corresponds to dlss upscaler open the game's install directory bin folder x64 replace the older version with the latest one here you go now it's not a mandatory requirement to enable hardware related gpu scheduling setting for using xcss frame generation but if you have an rtx gpu it's recommended to enable this setting right click anywhere on the desktop click on display settings click on graphics click on advanced graphics settings enable hardware related gpu scheduling setting from here I'll enable vSync from NVIDIA control panel. If your monitor supports VRR, enable the setting from here. XCSS frame generation does support VRR. Click on manage CD settings. Click on program settings. From this drop down bar, select Cyberpunk. Scroll down to the end, enable vSync from here. Apply. My monitor is G-Sync compatible. I'll enable the corresponding settings for it. Click on setup G-Sync here. Enable the following settings. Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible enable for full screen mode enable settings for the selected display model i'll also enable gsync compatible indicator this step is optional click on display here and check this setting gsync compatible indicator we are ready to run the game play in game settings i'm using the game's ultra preset with post processing effects disabled just set resolution scaling to xcss super resolution 2.0 using the upscaler's quality preset sharpness level set to 0.5 Frame generation disabled for the time being, first I'll show you the base game performance. Film grain, chromatic abrasion, depth of field, lens flare and motion blur disabled. High to ultra settings. Video settings. Vsync off. No FPS cap applied. Window mode. Windowed borderless. This game does not support frame generation in full screen mode. Resolution full HD. And media reflex enabled. Yeah, we have access to XCLL. XSS low latency disable for the time being. We are in. Just open OctaScaler menu by pressing the insert keyboard key. From this drop down bar, make sure DLSS is selected. Auto explore setting on. Don't need to change anything from here. You can verify DLSS upscaler's details via DLSS debug overlay. Render preset use this key. Version of the upscaler, it's the latest one. Auto explore setting is on. Base resolution and the upscale resolution. Click on save and I close. I am standing right outside V's apartment building in Little China. Here we are getting close to 80 FPS. I'll also enable NVIDIA's performance overlay. It shows the value for render latency, but it's only accurate for mod FSR frame generation. And the base game performance here render latency is around 14 milliseconds. Okay, I'll just apply a 30 FPS cap now. 70 to 80 fps without frame generation i'll apply an fps cap using rtss this is the place where i measured the game's latency using amd's frame latency meter measured the values with and without frame generation the yeah, animation quality here is looking very choppy as we have applied a 30 fps cap i'll be testing each frame generation technique with a 60 fps cap test the smoothing effect this is the frame latency meter result for the game running without frame generation reflects on you can see the fps values close to 80 and these are the latency values average latency of around 37 to 38 milliseconds seems to be accurate now i'll enable xss frame generation just open the game's graphics settings set frame generation to xcss frame generation click on apply I need to restart the game for XCSS frame generation to work. This will automatically disable NVIDIA Reflex and enable Intel XC low latency. It even comes with a frame rate limiter. Uncap the FPS. Play. You load the same checkpoint. Yeah, here we are getting around 125 FPS and I can observe the right amount of smoothness. This is how we get TLSS upscaler working with XCSS frame generation and I'll be honest guys latency is not a problem base FPS was already above 60 that really helps 
but XSS frame generation really does not add any considerable amount of latency. I'll enable NVIDIA's performance solely, but it cannot show us the accurate value for render latency. 120 to 130 FPS here. Games interface, it's not flickering. The smoothing effect is very consistent. Works even when we crouch. A vignette like effect gets applied when we crouch in this game. Okay, now I'll apply a 60 FPS cap. Resume the game. And now I'm observing some latency. That's why I applied the 60 FPS cap. It should be some latency if frame generation is working properly. Can still observe the smoothing effect. The thing is when you apply a 60 fps cap with the in-game FSR frame generation, you can easily tell that frame generation smoothing effect is not working properly. But here it's working just fine. Check out the DLSS debug overlay. Sometimes it flickers. See? It seems frame generation effect is getting applied on the overlay. You can disable this overlay after verifying the upscaler's details. Okay, I'll just remove this 60 FPS cap. Steal the vehicle now. No flickering occurs around the bumper of the vehicle when the vehicle is moving at high speeds. This happens when you use Nukem 9's mod. In order to fix the graphical artifacts caused by Nukem 9's mod, we need to use some other mods like frame gen ghosting fix for Cyberpunk. Also need to disable the in-game vignette. That can be done by using a couple of mods. Yeah, I'm not observing any ghosting around the vehicle's bumper. Move the camera slightly away. As you can see, shadow is also not flickering. Very impressive results produced by XSS Upscaler. It's not perfect though. I'll highlight one graphical artifact. Now I'm in Dogtown. Just observe the iron sight of my gun when I move the camera at a normal pace. Barely any ghosting occurs around the iron sight but when I move the camera around rapidly. Some noticeable ghosting is produced around the iron sight. This ghosting effect is way more aggressive in the case of FSR frame generation which I am going to highlight in the later part of the video. See the green circle is exhibiting some ghosting here. This is the frame latency meter result for Cyberpunk with XSS frame generation and low latency mode enabled. Not sure how accurate this result is. Latency value average of 45 to 46 milliseconds measured in Little China. Without frame generation, latency value was around 36 milliseconds. Now I'll test the in-game FSR frame generation. Just set in-game frame generation to FSR 3.1. Again, you don't need to change the in-game upscaler. Apply. Now if you enable the in-game reflex setting with the in-game FSR frame generation setting already enabled, this setting is not going to do anything. After restarting the game, you'll see that this setting will get disabled automatically. So it really does not matter if you enable or disable it. Look at the exact same checkpoint and look at that FPS value 120. You are getting roughly the same performance with XSS frame generation. You have 120 to 130 FPS. So both of these frame generation techniques are quite close when it comes to performance. But check out the smoothing effect. XSS frame generation smoothing effect was better than that of FSR frame generation. Let me just apply a 60 FPS cap. This will make things easier for us. Make it easier for us to gauge the smoothing effect of FSR frame generation. Resume the game. And now the animation quality is looking very choppy. FSR frame generation even at 60 FPS looks smoother than this. I mean XCSS frame generation was looking smoother than this. And I had applied a 60 FPS cap. Almost as if in-game FSR frame generation is not working at all. It's a very easy win for XCSS frame generation when it comes to the smoothing effect. No ghosting occurs around the vehicle's bumper even with the in-game FSR frame generation but some ghosting occurs around a weapon's iron sight. I'm in Dogtown. 
Even when I move the camera around slowly, aggressive coasting occurs around the iron side, the green circle. Now I'll move the camera around rapidly. Oh my god, look at that ugly coasting. So it's safe to say that XSS frame generation produces less graphical artifacts than the in-game FSR frame generation. Its smoothing effect is also better than that of the in-game FSR frame generation. When it comes to latency, I'll be honest, FSR frame generation does not produce any excessive latency but it is actually not working properly in this game so that may be contributing towards its low latency this is the frame latency meter test result for cyberpunk with the in-game fsr frame generation setting enabled the average latency value was around 66 milliseconds i don't think this result is very accurate check out the base fps value it's close to 30 I conducted this test in Little China. No 30 FPS cap was applied. My base FPS was within a range of 70 to 80. This is why I think this test result is not accurate. Make of it what you will. Now I'll be testing Newcom 9's mod FSR frame generation. I have installed the mod for fixing frame generation related graphical artifacts, mods for disabling the in-game vignette effect, and the mod for disabling the floating papers, debris. I have already covered Newcom 9's mod for this game in another video. We'll drop its link in the description. From the graphics setting, just set frame generation to DLSS frame generation apply. This will force enable NVIDIA reflex. It actually works with mod FSR frame generation. Unlike the in-game FSR frame generation, official implementation restart the game. We are in. Yeah, here FPS is close to 130, little China. I'll just run around. Getting a slightly better performance with mod FSR frame generation compared to FSR and XCSS frame generation. Mod FSR frame generation is outputting 130 FPS here, whereas FSR and XCSS frame generation were outputting 120 FPS. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. Mod FSR frame generation smoothing effect is slightly better than that of XCSS frame generation way better than that of the in-game FSR frame generation which is actually broken not observing any significant graphical artifacts I'll just apply a 60 FPS cap check the mod FSR frame generation latency open RTSS apply a 60 FPS cap back to the game yeah even with a 60 FPS cap I can observe the added amount of smoothness but I am observing some latency, I'll be honest. Mod FSR frame generation latency feels slightly higher than that of XCSS frame generation. When I used XCSS frame generation with a 60 FPS cap. If you are playing the game using a mouse and a keyboard, it's highly recommended to target a minimum of 60 as the base FPS. This way, latency won't be a problem. This is why I was not able to spot the difference in latency when I was playing the game with an uncapped FPS. Remove the 60 FPS cap, show you the iron side coasting effect. And now I'm in talk town. Just observe the iron side of my gun. Moving the camera at a normal pace. You can see some ghosting. This ghosting is present even after applying the frame gen ghosting fix. Now I'll move the camera around rapidly. Oh my god, look at that ugly ghosting. XCSS frame generation produce considerably less coasting here. I'll be honest guys, XCSS frame generation is much closer to DLSS frame generation than FSR frame generation. Very impressive results produced by XCSS. I really hope more games in the future will support it officially. Its smoothing effect in this game is better than that of the in-game FSR frame generation. Almost on par with Nugam 9's mod FSR frame generation and it does not add any excessive amount of latency. This is the frame latency meter test result for Cyberpunk running with Nucom 9 mod FSR frame generation and reflex enabled. Latency value was close to 40 milliseconds, roughly a 4 to 5 milliseconds increase in latency after enabling mod FSR frame generation. Again, I'm not sure how accurate this software is. Before ending the video, I'll just show you how to disable DLSS debug overlay. Just need to edit the overlay.reg file that we created earlier. Select the file, right click notepad. Replace the number 4 here with 0. Click on file, click on save, close and run this registry file. Open. Click on yes. Okay. That's it for the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.